All right, in this video, I'll be explaining how to build circuits with the resistors and how to make each of the electrical measurements. So I started with a 12 volt circuit, which uses a 470 ohm resistor, a 100 ohm resistor, a 510 ohm resistor, and a 100 ohm resistor. So as far as making the measurements, we have no power connected to the board. I've just got the resistor stuck in the board for demonstration purposes. Turn our meter on to ohms, and then our leads. The red lead is in the volt ohm slot, and the black lead is in the common spot. It always stays there. So these resistors are just on the board, and since each of these conducts to these five holes in that row, and these five holes in that row, and they don't conduct this way. They only conduct up and down relative to looking at the board. So they're not connected together. So since they're not connected, that means they're isolated and we can measure them. And lead on each side of the resistor. We get a reading of 462 ohms. <coughs> On the 100 ohm resistor, we get a reading of 98.7, the 510, 510 exactly, and the final 100, we get 99.7, which is good. They're within tolerance. It's rare to find one that's exactly what it shows or what it's stated to be. So now in order to build the circuit, I'll start the first one or 470 ohm resistor out in the positive spot here because when I put my power to the circuit this whole row down here will be 12 volts so I'll plug that in and run it over to one of the rows the second resistor has to be in the same row going this direction so that they're connected electrically and I run the second resistor, the 100 ohm, over to another row. It doesn't matter what row. The only thing that matters is that my next 510 ohm resistor is still in the same row going this way. And then run the 510 down to another row. Finally, my 100 ohm in the same row as the 510 and since it's the last resistor in the circuit it's going to go to this strip that I will be connecting to ground or battery negative so now these resistors are all connected in series from here through the 470 the 100 the 510 and finally the last 100 ohms now I can make my reading to get total resistance. And to get total resistance, I'm just going to go from the beginning of the circuit to the end of the circuit. And it appears I have a bad connection. Let's fix that. And I have a total resistance of 1,170 ohms. Now I'm ready to start putting voltage to this circuit so I can measure my voltage drops. Get my jumper wires out here. And I'm going to put a wire in the positive 12 volts and the ground. And that'll get me 12 volts. And positive 12 goes to this strip that's labeled positive and the ground goes to the strip that's labeled negative okay. and those positive and negative strips are the only two that conduct in this left right direction All right. so now I can turn the box on apply 12 volts to the circuit I've got to set my meter up to measure voltage so since the red lead is still in the volt ohm slot, all I have to do is turn my dial to DC volts. That's the one with the straight line and then the dashed line above it. 
So now I can measure, just like I'm measuring resistance, however the power's on, and my power wires are connected. So the voltage drop on that one's 4.68. Voltage drop on the 100 ohm is about a volt. On the 510, I got 5.16 volts. And the 100, I've got, again, about a volt. And so if I recorded all those, they would add up to my source voltage here. If I go from the beginning to the end, my source voltage of 11.85. So the voltage drop of each individual resistor will add up to my total voltage drop of 11.85. That's my source voltage. Okay, now I'll need to measure current. And in order to measure current, the meter has to be connected in series with the circuit. So the current flowing through this circuit is going to have to flow through the meter. I can break my circuit anywhere. All right? I choose to break it right here at the positive side and I have a spare wire that I'll insert exactly where I took this positive wire out. I could break it anywhere just you'd have to be sure to put that wire in the exact spot where you took the wire out. Now I've got two wires sticking up in the air here just like I've cut that wire in half and that will allow me to hook my meter from one of these leads to the other. And to set my meter up to measure current, I have to turn my dial to DC current. It's capital A with the straight line and the straight hash line. And right here, I have to move my meter lead over here to one of these amperage slots. I've calculated the current to this circuit and I've calculated that current to be 0 0.01 amps, which when you convert that comes out to be 10 milliamps. And so 10 milliamps is well below my 300 milliamp limit. So I'm not even going to bother sticking my lead in the 10 amp slot because I know this circuit should have below 300 milliamps. So I'm just going to use the 300 milliamp spot there and connect one lead to this wire, one lead to the other. It doesn't really matter which one you connect to, and I get 10 milliamps, okay? And as I was saying, it doesn't matter which way you connect them. If I just reverse them, then it shows negative on my meter, and knowing that I'm using DC current, it just tells me that my reading, my meter's leads are backwards. All I gotta do is either ignore the negative sign or switch my leads and it'll go away. So those are the three main readings that you will have to take whenever calculating and then measuring these circuits on the test.